you know, what the nature of it is, local. Well, we've got the time. Then you won't get the problem. One minute. No. It, and you know, there's not much difference between a doctor and a, um, a, a mechanic. No. no. It's a localised problem associated with whoever ails the, uh, the engine. But not the associated parts. No. <laughs> <laughs> And if they do stumble across it, you don't have a duty of care. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's arrived at 7 o'clock, our commencement hour. If I can have your attention, please. Thank you, members of the gallery. We're about to commence our meeting. It's arrived at 7 o'clock. Thank you very much. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Can I welcome all here this evening? Um, there are agendas circulating the seats. Uh, please. Um, um, use them, or if you don't have nothing around, you can share with your neighbour next to you. If you have your mobile phone, can you please switch it off or put it on silent? It's very important. Uh, also, um, you can leave quietly if you've come for a particular item, but um, uh, you can do so at your leisure as well. There's no direct dialogue between members of the gallery and, and council. There is an opportunity for questions to be asked, providing you complete the question on the question sheet and submit it uh, during or at the end of the meeting. That will be considered at item uh, five. In tonight's agenda. So thank you once again for attending. We'll now commence tonight's meeting. Uh, the membership is as listed. Uh, item two, apologies. We have um, two apologies. We actually have um, Councillor Bellower who is on leave of absence, so we'll know her as leave of absence for this evening's meeting. And Councillor Julie Williams um, is also an apology tonight. We'll now go to item three, which is disclosure of conflicts of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest from councillors? None. If there are none, we'll keep moving ahead. We now go to confirmation of minutes of the previous council Happy meetings. Happy Happy new councillor Greco, second, second councillor Walsh. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. We now go to item five, public question time, and we've had several questions lodged online, so I'll commence with um, those um, which were submitted earlier. And uh, I know there are residents in the room who would prefer to read out theirs who have also lodged theirs online. I'll commence with this one here first. Uh, we have one from Anne Laver. Uh, who's asked the following question. Is Anne here? Oh, I beg your pardon, I apologise. So, would you like to read your question? I'll respond to it. Okay, thank you. I've got two questions. Yep. The first one is, uh, I refer to the audit report dated 6th of June, mm -hmm. item 6.1, and it says, states, um, I'm asked, when will the council review the policy of self-authorisation of expenses? I believe the current policy does not appear to support transparency and governance. Okay, thank you very much. I've got a written response here. If you want to take a seat, I'll read this out. Uh, Section 3C of the Local Government Act sets out the objectives of council when facilitating council business. As highlighted by Ms Lave, one of the objectives is to ensure transparency and accountability in council decision making. Section 75 of the Local Government Act requires council to adopt and maintain a policy in relation to the reimbursement of expenses for councils and committee members. Councils appropriately adopted the Council Support and Expenses Policy for 2013, as required under Section 75B of the Local Government Act, adhering to its responsibility to ensure transparency and accountability in relation to expenses and reimbursements. The policy provides that councils submit a signed declaration electronically or in hard copy for mobile phone and cab, char and cab charges to the Corporate Governance and Performance Department within 14 days of the account being sent with a four, further 14 days provided after submitting the declaration to make payment to the council for any non-related council expense incurred. The onus is on each individual councillor to make a true declaration before submitting it to the Governance Department for endorsement. To ensure enhanced transparency in relation to expenses and reimbursements incurred by individual councillors, the information is published quarterly on, on council's website within one week of reporting the information to council's audit committee. So that's your response to that question. You have a second question? Yes, I have a second question. Yep. It's further to that um, statement, actually, and it refers to the Council's Expense and Support Policy, Item 12.1, and the Local Government Act, Section 75B, as at the 6th of jo June in the audit report, certain councillors had outstanding monies owed to the Council. I ask when would they be repaid, please? Okay, thanks for that. I advise that um, uh, there are no current outstanding monies owed by Council or any uh, by any council officer or any council council at the moment. That's our response to that. So thank you for that. Okay, Oki, if you can uh, now get the mic. I understand there's other questions from Serena. You're here, Serena. Thank you, Serena. 
Um, Oki, over there, if you can um, please uh, pass the mic to Serena uh, O'Malley from uh, Risible. Uh, thank you. Um, the following question relates to inaccuracies in response to my questions which I received at the council meeting on 1 August 2016. Uh, the first part is, can you please confirm that only the former Ruthven Primary School site will be valued on a general residential zone to zoning and that the 1.8 hectares of land adjoining the Mary Creek at the former Lakeside Secondary College will be valued on an industrial zoning. That's the first part. And the second part is, why has the Education Department had to, pre had to proceed independently with the valuation of these two parcels of land without instructions from Council? Thank you very much. I'll uh, answer both those questions individually, uh, both parts. Representatives from the Department of Education, Training uh, and... Mr Mayor, could you please speak into the microphone so we can hear? Is that better, Council Greco? Thank, Thank you. you. Representatives from the Department of Education, Training and the Department of Environment land, water and planning have advised Council that the Victorian Government seeks to obtain valuations on the basis outlined in your question. And the second part is, the answer to your question would be more appropriately answered by the Department of Education and Training and Council as it's their land. And you've got further questions? Uh, I'm not very satisfied with that answer. That's okay. You, you uh, said something very specific to me in the last okay, question. Okay, well, your next question, your next question, we're not having a debate here. Okay. Um, will you please note for the public record my acknowledgement of your offer of a meeting with the Mayor and the CEO to discuss the Ruthven and Lakeside sites and that my reason for declining is because I'm concerned about perceptions regarding such a meeting when the State Ombudsman is investigating my, my complaint which relates to the two sites. So thank you for the invitation but at this point I must that's, that's fine, it's been put on public record and acknowledged as well so thank you for that. Okay, we also have uh, other questions which have been lodged online. Um, Jacinta? <coughs> uh, from, this is from Peter Thompson from Reservoir. Uh, the question is, will you and the City of Durban boycott the consumption of any CUB products? Um, I'm not sure how appropriate that is. Um, it's not in line with um, our operational matters that we normally discuss, but I'll actually strike that question out as it's... Um, uh, not actually determined to be in the core function and duties of council operations, and that's in section 54.6. So thanks for the question, but unfortunately we can't answer that because it's not appropriate, and nor, nor an operational, but yeah, thank you anyhow, Peter. Thank you. Now, are there any questions that uh, the members of the gallery wish to um, ask? Thank you. If you can raise, state your name, your, um, your, your suburb, and read the question out, and we'll try to attempt to address that, and submit the question to our officer there as well. No, no, we just want questions and your name and suburb, please. We don't want preambles, simply questions. Okay. That's pretty clear. Uh, I'm Anthony Manus Petiri. I'm from the Christian Market Traders. Yep. Uh, my question relates to the gender item, so I may not be covered at this point in time. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to take that on notice then. Yep. So, can, can I still ask the question? Yep. You can ask the question, but we may not be able to provide a response. Okay. in relation to that matter and I'll take it on notice and respond to you accordingly after discussion with our officers on that matter. Thank you. If you can submit that form to our, um, our officer there as well. So we've got it on record. Thank you. Are there any other questions from members of the gallery? Yes, gentlemen over there. Sir, yes. Hi, I'm David Lister, uh, Reservoir. Um, two questions are, is what measures uh, do Council plan to ensure residents affected by the proposed closure of Cheddar Road and Carroll Street um, to have ready access to their home while also allowing for emergency services and access regress uh, both north and south off Carroll Street? 
one, uh, and the other is what measures do council, um, uh, what measures will council undertake to ensure that procedural fairness um, and transparency of planning and decisions are made? Thank you, David. Thank you, David. If you can just take, I've also got another question here, which I've just been uh, given by a governance officer. It's recently in nature, but I will read it. It's from um, Dulcie Hook. Dulcie, I think. Dulcie. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dulcie. I'll just read the first part. It says, my concern is where Council's proposed permanent closure of the central median strip on Cheddar Road and Carroll Street Reservoir, and it goes on to a fair amount of preamble. So it's very similar in nature, so I might hand pass that to our officers for more detailed response as to where that's at and what the actual facts are in relation to that matter. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, through Mr Mayor, so the current understanding of the proposed closure for the um, road in question is no longer proceeding. Um, so officers will consult with the affected residents in the normal course of our um, operations. So that's the current status as of, as of today. Not proceeding. Okay. And we'll also provide a uh, response yeah, to... Yeah, we'll provide that, an outline of any writing. Yeah. Thank you for that. Are there any further questions? Yes, lady in the back row, please. Thank you. If you can submit your question to uh, on the appropriate <coughs> form to our officer. Thank you. Do you, have it, do you have it completed? We'll need that submitted for record keeping. Thank you. But, yep. Hello, my name is Amy Stubberfield of Reservoir. I'm just inquiring whether the council has any plans, um, whether currently or in the future, to address uh, to address the uh, gender pay gap uh, amongst its workers. Uh, that's an operational matter. I think we may need to um, uh, take it on notice. I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Okay. Are there any further questions from members of the gallery? Gentleman in the front row there, sir. Yes, Keith. Um, I've got two questions. The first one is, is there anyone who inspects the quality and workmanship of footpath replacements done by developers? Example, 93 Darabin Boulevard. The footpath, when you walk on it, you feel it uneven. It looks uneven, and it is uneven. Where the joins are, it's a tripping hazard, and there's sharp edges. If an older person was to slip there, or a young kid, which we've got a number of young kids in that area, they will get seriously injured. Thank you, Keith. Uh, we do have um, inspections after completion of works, but we'll take that one on notice too, and uh, obviously go and um, do a yep, we'll inspect, inspect that as well. And my second one was posed by the residents of Dunn Street. When I was walking around um, letterboxing. Is it possible to put lighting along the foot work, walking path in Bundura Park? In the winter, as it gets dark early, as we know, some residents still like to walk with their dogs and even ride their bikes in the late afternoon after work. Maybe put it on a timer if you're worried about it being on too long and for hoons but it's something they asked me to put up. Fantastic for that. Uh, we'll certainly um, respond back to you um, and take it on notice, of course. We'll have a look at it and see um, what appropriate lighting is required, if there's any there, and how we can deal with that question. Thank you very much, Keith. Any further questions from members gallery? Yes, lady in the front here. Thanks, Oki. Okay. Hi, I would like to ask two questions, please. What is the case? Uh, your name and just suburb where you live, please. Okay. My name is Nahid from Preston. I would like to ask about what the council is doing to maintain the culture of Preston market. That's the first question. The second question, please. What is the council doing about all the parking loss due to development of Preston market? And the council is keeping over the responsibility of the parking for Preston market. Thank you very much. In relation to the Preston Market, um, our officers from our Economic Development Department will um, no doubt um, liaise with the owners of the market to ensure that everyone's um, uh, happy and working in, uh, for the right reasons. In relation to um, parking on site, um, we've not actually um, had any development commence there, so I'm not too sure about shortage of parking. We have had a presentation from the owners of the market uh, recently in what's proposed there, so we'll obviously look at those parking issues once we have a full lodgement of um, of an application. And in relation to um, the parking monitoring, I do understand it's now it's come in-house at yep. the request of um, the owners of the market for council to monitor parking and parking restrictions at the, at the market. Is that right, Steve? Uh, that's correct. Yep. 
Thank you for that. Okay. Are there any further questions from members of the gallery? Yes, lady in the back there, Oki. And can we please submit those questions? Uh, they need to be written in, in, um, in a private form. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Masa. Do you actually answer questions from people, residents outside of the city? Oh, no, we can, yeah, by all means. Yeah, my name is Masa, M-A-H-S-A, and um, uh, I'm from Heidelberg. Yeah. yeah, my question is again about Preston Market. I wanted to know, has there been any consultation done with the actual community, according to the owners of the Preston there is 80,000 visitors every week. We need a question. I don't want to preamble. Just a has question. There, has there been any consultation done with the community and where is the result if it has been Consultation done? in relation to what? To the developments. Well, we've, once we receive a full set of plans, we'll continue to assess those, how they comply with our, our, our um, suggestions for the market. There are concerns from councillors, as have been raised in the past, as to the future of the market and what it will offer uh, in relation to community benefits. So, as um, you're saying, if when the plan is actually approved, then the consultation will be done with the community. Okay, thank you. That answered my question. Mr. Mayor, maybe we should talk a bit because it's more complicated than that. It is a very complicated series yeah, of things so. that are yeah. Thank you for that. If there's uh, no further questions, we'll continue with tonight's meeting. Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay for the duration of the meeting or leave when your item has been considered. Thank you. We'll now go to item six, consideration reports. The first one being 6.1, <coughs> say no to racism training package. We have a recommendation there. I'll, I'll move, move that. Move, move Councillor Greco, second Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco, you have a floor. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, um, I'll um, speak to this motion. Uh, this, motion, uh, this report is in response to a, um, a motion that I had put a, a few months ago requesting that we receive a, a report uh, on, um, on, 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 um, on how to promote the very successful Say No to Racism training package that has been developed here at the City of Darabin. I know that this package has, uh, uh, has received recognition not only uh, amongst councils but also amongst levels of government not only in Victoria but also in, in South Australia. So uh, I commend the work that's been done behind the um, Say No to Racism um, training um, campaign and package. Uh, I note that the report uh, also talks about um, some of the um, what has been conducted in relation to um, this training package and almost on a monthly basis this, this training package has been rolled out uh, to various uh, organisations and, and, and uh, schools and, and sporting clubs. And the focus here has been so far is, is to focus uh, the, um, the, the training package with schools and also with sporting organisations. We note that uh, sporting organisations are a place where uh, people get together and meet and uh, for recreational reasons and enjoyment and, um, and it's a really... Um, uh, 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 a great tar uh, a great opportunity to target those groups and or uh, organizations in order to promote the the, the say no to, to racism um, um, strategy that Darab council is so um, uh, passionate about also I note in the report that um, that uh, the Darab council is working with um, uh, some partners uh, about um, um, uh, and commencing work on the development of a communication and marketing plan Actually, my motion um, that solicited this report was about um, uh, to get a report on how to promote it. I, I noticed that the work is currently being done in relation to developing that marketing um, strategy, and I really look forward to um, to, re uh, to um, receiving that strategy here on uh, in, in our chamber, so that we can have a look at it, and so that in future we can actually um, for council to endorse or to make further recommendations on how to promote this very successful uh, program. Just in finishing, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, again, I, I just want to commend the officers that have, be, that have been behind this uh, strategy. Um, we often talk about um, multiculturalism, interculturalism, and uh, we often talk about um, how important it is to, to maintain community harmony. And I think that the city of Darabin is leading the way in that particular direction by not just only talking about it, but how to actually promote it amongst clubs and associations and also amongst the other levels of government. So I, I commend the work that's been done and I look forward to seeing a future report on how we can further promote this strategy. Thank you very much, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yeah, yes, Mr Mayor. Just uh, again to uh, congratulate the officers on this work that's gone forward and it's quality work which we can see 
other councils and other organisations are picking up on. And also what's uh, quite exciting, this is going interstate as well. So this means that the intellectual capital and the, uh, the um, social inclusion uh, practical measures that are included in this program actually will be used across the sector. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. There's no further speakers. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That item is carried. Thank you, councillors. Next item we're considering is R6.2, the Durban Electronic Gaming um, Machine happy to Policy. Move, the move Council Lee, second <coughs> Council McCarthy. Council Lee, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This uh, report documents Council's uh, commitment and actions to date on the gambling um, policy and reform. Uh, and uh, I've moved the original motion to, uh, to undertake various stopgap measures and uh, other initiatives. Uh, it's important to know that we have made a $5,000 contribution to the Alliance for Gambling Reform and also signed a letter to the PM and the opposition leader to support gambling reform. Um, I do sound like a bit of a broken record on this, but we do lose on average 80 odd million uh, per year uh, in the city of Darabin to pokies. I just uh, accessed the data from the Gaming Legal Licensing Commission today and it's sad to see that um, in 2015-16 year our pokey loss has actually increased from uh, $83.8 million in 2014-15 to $84.3 million in 2015-16. The really sad aspect of it is that pokies do actually target the most vulnerable and disadvantaged in our community. I note that the four biggest uh, loss venues are in Reservoir and Preston. $14 million was lost at Edwards Lark Hotel, $13 million was lost at Summer Hills Hotel, $10 million was lost at Olympic Hotel, another $10 million at Kramer's Hotel. So together, those four venues out of the 12 venues that we have in Darabin contributed to $47 million out of the $84.3 million loss that we incurred by the city of Darabin, or just over 56%. It is a pity that councils are no longer allowed to charge differential rates uh, to um, pokies venues. And let's face it, some of their community, so-called community contribution schemes operated pokey operators are nothing more than window dressing. So it is a sad fact that that's $84.3 million we lost to by, by our community members last year. That's $84.3 million not spent in our local shops at the personal market, at our hairdressers, in our cafes, in our restaurants. But it's something that needs to be addressed not only by the council, but I think also by the state and federal government. I'll leave it at there, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you. I commend um, <coughs> Councillor Lee on his work on this issue. And uh, council's work, in fact, goes far back on this issue, going back, in fact, into the previous term in terms of the forum, where uh, I think councillors need to recall and remember that we were one of the first councils to uh, take a very aggressive stance uh, in terms of opposing any new gaming uh, machines or gambling machines, we should call them, poker machines, EGMs, um, in the city of Darabin. And the reason why we did that was because we found out that we had a higher than proportionate number of EGMs in this city compared to the rest of metropolitan Melbourne and certainly the rest of Victoria. So we are carrying a greater burden here in the city of Darabin, and we have for a long time, um, to feed what is essentially a state government addiction to pokies revenue. Um, Councillor Lee made reference to the, the sheer amount of money that is lost to our community as a result. Um, and what we have here is a report that provides a way forward in terms of Council's positioning on this, given the limitations that we have found when we have opposed uh, new gaming machines in this city. And councillors might recall at the start of this term, we saw the introduction of gaming machines, gambling machines at the Grandview Hotel, which provides an income stream to um, one of our sports clubs, and I think there's an issue there um, that we need to address. Um, but significantly, that was against Council's wishes, um, which were based on a, a very detailed report that found there are eight mental health services within two kilometres of the Grandview Hotel, in, as well as uh, an Aboriginal women's hostel um, just across the road. So if government is going to take action on issues like family violence and poverty and housing, it needs to also take action in relation to reform and, uh, and removal of EGMs, particularly in areas like Darabin, uh, where we have some highly vulnerable residents, as Councillor Lee has outlined. Um, I support the report, I support the way forward, um, but we need to see some action from other levels of government. Thank you very much, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Greco, anything new to add? Yes, I do, uh, Mr. Lee. Uh, um, 
I, I've got a, a small um, a amendment, if I may, um, and if I may read it out, and I apologise for not submitting this to, to councillors before, but it's actually been prompted by, by the debate that I've just heard here tonight. And the, the amendment that I want to put forward is, is that the council write to the Minister for Gaming requested that Darabin receive a greater share of the community support funds to promote initiatives against problem gambling in the Darabin area. Happy to second that. Well, it's well, it's not. Move in a second. Yeah, look, I, I, I won't go over what's already been said, but I'll just speak to um, the, the specific part of my amendment. Um, look, a, a, as it was mentioned, in, in the city of Darabin, um, we lose a lot of money to, to, to gaming and to, um, particularly to the pokies and um, relative to other, other areas and other municipalities in, 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 in Melbourne. And, um, but what it is is that um, the, the state government has a, a community support fund. I, I still believe it's called that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't get the, our, our share of that community support fund to actually fund initiatives against problem gambling. We tried this a few years ago with, a, uh, with, a, with the previous government, but um, um, they were not to listen. And now that we have a, 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 a new uh, state government, I think it's an opportune to actually speak to the uh, minister to see what extra funds Darabin <coughs> area can get in order to provide activities against problem gambling. And I must say, Mr what? Mayor, uh, if I'm not interrupted, I must mm. say, Mr Mayor, when, when I was there, I actually spoke to the... Um, I had the opportunity to speak to the, um, the shadow minister for um, gaming at the time. Um, the name slips my mind. 15 um, seconds. Yeah, and, um, and he was actually warmed to that idea of actually providing councils like that but extra funds to, to support uh, initiatives against problem gambling. Thank you, Councillor Greco, and I appreciate that inclusion too. If you can submit that to our minute takers for a record keeping, yes. that would be great. If there's no further discussion or debate, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. And we'll note that as unanimous yes, as councillor McCarthy. Thank you. Thank you. Next Mayor. item is 6.3. Yes. Uh, increasing the provision yes. of netball courts Happy. in Durban. Happy. Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Lee has moved a uh, proposed amendment. Yes. I also have an amendment which. Um, so, um, councillor Lee, you're on the floor. I'll hear from you first. The, uh, yeah. so. Let's I, I did circulate the amendment to all councillors uh, and uh, key uh, staff this afternoon. Um, the amendment is such that uh, uh, recommendation one and two stand. and. Uh, Number three is to receive a report on uh, making the non-compliant courts compliant uh, and identifying possible funding sources and opportunities. Seconded by Councillor uh, McCarthy. Seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Um, and point four, I'm not sure if that's available on the screen. <coughs> Are we talking that up now? Because it was only brought to us uh, right point now. Point four, um, which is a result of discussions with officers before this meeting, uh, which is to write to all local members of state and federal parliament requesting that they advocate to the Victorian Minister for Sport, John Erin, to expedite state government approval of the multi-sport stadium at John K. Memorial. You happy with that, Councillor Lee? Thank you very much. Councillor Lee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll just uh, speak very briefly to my amendment because uh, I think Councillor McCarthy would like to speak to his amendment. Um, the provision of netball courts is an important aspect of our um, policy on uh, inclusion of women and girls in sport, as the report outlines. Uh, council officers spent a significant amount of time looking at various sites that are acceptable to Darabin. Uh, I refer to Appendix C and page 14 of the report in particular, where it noted uh, the sites in Darabin that are suitable <coughs> for development network courts um, in both uh, uh, north of the city but also in the south of the city. But uh, when I look at the particularly Appendix C, I notice there are a number of courts, in the, particularly in the Preston area, that were deemed to be non-compliant um, and somehow uh, they were dropped off the list. So what I would like to know, uh, specifically my amendment, is to look at how can we, or if we can, we can make those more compliant um, with a view to get fun possible funding sources and opportunities because we don't need to go it along. I think uh, obviously Sport and Recreation Victoria, uh, perhaps it's also the Education Department can look into some of those activities to increase uh, girls' and women's participation in sport as their overall social inclusion objective. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Lee. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I welcome the, um, the investment from the State Government, which was part of a, a pre-election pledge uh, in 2014. And I think we actually need to recognise the role that Darabin residents actually played in uh, bringing forth that pledge. Um, councillors may recall in 2014 a petition that was uh, signed by over a thousand Darabin residents, uh, including many uh, women, uh, mothers, fathers, children, um, who have been involved 
in taking their uh, taking their families to netball facilities on the other side of the, of, of, uh, of the river um, to the south because there are simply not enough netball courts in the city of Darabin to meet the growing demand. Um, and the demand is, is not only growing, it is, is booming in some parts of the city uh, for netball courts. And of course, it was uh, this city that made a, 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 a fantastic decision in 2014 to commit to the development of a multi-sport stadium with a focus on netball. And, uh, and the reason why we did that is because this is a gender issue. Um, we have a lot of outdoor recreational facilities football, cricket and soccer, but very few when it comes to netball. And uh, we know the high rates of participation um, of boys, but we also know the low rates of participation uh, for girls and for other people that want to play netball as well. So we made a, a call there and we made that commitment. Um, and as part of that commitment, we welcomed the, uh, the contribution of uh, support for outdoor netball courts. Um, however, I'm quite alarmed by the, uh, by the reference in the report on page 13 um, that suggests that our, our multi-sport stadium, uh, which is a major project which Council has made a commitment to um, uh, in the millions of dollars, um, it is requiring state government approval um, because it is uh, located or proposed to be located at John Kane Memorial Park and yet it seems to have been held up due to a negotiation process uh, with the Sport and Recreation Victoria. So, um, and Council will see on page 13 that the project, in fact, um, is listed as being on hold pending negotiations with the State Government. Um, so, hence the request to write to the respective local members. Um, I know our officers have made representations to Ministers. Um, I'm sure yourself, Mr Mayor, has as well. It's time for our local members um, to step Time up Councillor McCarthy, thank you. Councillor Walsh. Um, thank you um, very much, Mr Mayor. Um, Look, these netball, I'll, I'm speaking in favour, obviously. Um, these netball uh, um, and sports facilities are um, indeed very important. And I note, um, and you know, I do note the um, current state government has um, um, a commitment to fund um, new netball, um, new, um, new, uh, new sports facilities in the um, um, in um, in Darabin, and um, however, I, th I think the, um, the ha they have been a bit slow to um, action so far. But um, I think, um, but so it would be good if um, all um, all governments um, with this could could um, come to the um, come to the party. Um, I will also um, speak to um, and acknowledge Council McCarthy's um, am um, amendment because. Um, and because it, because I too was concerned um, in the report that um, to read that um, the um, um, that the multi-purpose sports stadium um, site um, John Kane is um, um, is um, is on hold. Um, the um, there's so, because there's so much p potential at that site, and we um, we really need the. Um, um, the, um, the minister to not only um, um, approve it, but um, but they also, um, but the government also needs to um, approve um, some um, some funds, some fun, seconds. funds there. And if we um, and if we fund this, but, um, you know, I've said I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, the sky's the limit on what we can achieve at that site. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. If there's no further comment or debate, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That item is carried. Thank you, Councillors. Next item we're looking at is 6.4. Amendment move, GC 42. Move, Councillor McCarthy. Seconded, Councillor Lee. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, look, I'm really pleased that this has come back to us uh, in time within this term as councillors. <coughs> we'll recall um, Darabin uh, went in with a joint application alongside Manningham Council um, supporting a uh, proposal to change our planning scheme um, to in fact achieve some of the uh, environmental sense, um, sustainable design aspirations that we've had in this city for a long time and certainly that our officers have done a lot of work on um, to get us this far. Uh, another collaboration of around five councils have already gone through this process and received approval from the planning minister to include new clauses in their planning scheme that enable them to enforce better uh, conditions when it comes to design principles, which actually are about improving the livability, particularly of um, apartments, but also of single dwelling homes. And, uh, and Darabin, I think, um, is, uh, is, is perfect for this sort of initiative. And uh, certainly, um, with our partners in Manningham, um, has gone through the process in order to get that enforceable. 
Um, we've gone through a panel process and there's been some proposals to change um, elements of the, the change to the planning scheme and that's really to bring that into compliance and our officers have provided some good comment there in relation to which um, components of the panel's recommendations we would support and which we would not as well. I would just note uh, that um, the only objection to our uh, ESD controls that are contained in this planning scheme amendment in fact come from uh, the vested interests that uh, do not wish to improve um, the housing stock and the new housing stock and I think this echoes what's taken place with the planning minister's approval of uh, minimum requirements for apartments which just uh, I think was announced today where once again it was the Property Council um, of Victoria which opposed those changes um, even though they are uh, not even as good as what we currently can see in, in, uh, in the city of Sydney. So we're, we are lagging behind um, in, uh, in Victoria in relation to quality standards and environmentally sensitive design in relation to other cities in Australia and around the world. Um, but certainly if this is adopted this evening um, and we take uh, that next step from a proposal which we've been working on for some time um, to actually putting this in our planning scheme, then it means that those environmentally sensitive design principles, and they're things that actually change the livability of apartments um, around this city that are now built, um, this, will actually, this will actually make have a lasting effect, and it will have a lasting effect on people's lives. It will also have a, a direct impact on the livability of new housing stock um, particularly when it comes to the flow-on effects of things like the heat island effect, which we are starting to see increasingly in the city of Darabin, particularly in Preston and Reservoir, which were identified as two hotspots. Um, and of course, we're also seeing a lot of apartments developed there. So we're getting in just in time before the next round, um, and hopefully the planning minister will support our proposal, which has gone through the official process. I'd like to thank our officers and the community members that have supported this to get us this far. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lee, second. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. As uh, page uh, 19 and 20 of the report uh, indicate, this is uh, Council's uh, work to do with the environmental sustainability policy, as Councillor McCarthy said earlier. Uh, it has gone through a very rigorous process, and uh, we certainly hope that will get tick approval from the Planning Minister. Uh, I think this is one of those areas where uh, practice always lag behind contemporary practice, and uh, it is fair to say that in contemporary practice, a lot of the good designers and so forth, uh, architects are already incorporating environmentally sustainable developments uh, throughout their um, particularly medium to high density developments, and we've seen a couple of those go through in both the Moreland Council and also in the Darabin Council. I think if I can maybe just flag another issue is the, the next frontier would be to make those uh, uh, high density developments universally accessible and adaptable for the ageing population. That would be the next frontier for our medium to dense high density living. Uh, that is a, a discussion to be had for another day. But if we are to support our, our aged care resident, uh, um, aging population, we do need to ensure they can age in place. And this is where universal design and, and adaptable housing has to come into play as part of the planning scheme. But that's the discussion for another day, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lee. There's no further comment for <coughs> debate from councillors. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. Was that noted as unanimous? Please, Was that noted as unanimous? Please, 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 please. Thank you. Next item is uh, 6.5, the proposed road, road discontinuance <coughs> to the rear of 33, 37 Cooper Street and 34 to 38 Asling Street in Preston. We have a recommendation there. <coughs> Somebody move it. Move. move. Councillor Walsh, have a seconder. Second Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Walsh, do you wish to speak to it? Um, no, I think it's fairly, I think it's fairly sad, but if others have got other points. Thank you. For debate, I'm happy to listen to it. If there's no comment or debate from councillors, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Next item is our 6.6 .6, appointment of an external audit committee member. We've got a report there and a recommendation. Move. move, Councillor Walsh. Have a seconder. <coughs> Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Walsh. Um, look, I won't take too. Um, I won't take too long, but. Um, um, this um, because this is fairly um, fairly standard, but indeed, um, um, indeed, Mr. Apodi's, um, um, um I, I had a look at her. Um, um, you know, I read the I read the report, but also um, had um, had a look at her. Um, um, had a look at what I could find um, find about her as part of my um, due diligence as a councillor and um, or indeed audit committee member um, but um, and um, you know her CV is certainly um, 
um, her, her CV is, very, is certainly very impressive, so I'm sure she will be a um, asset to the um, to the council and the audit committee. Thank you very much, Councillor Wash. Councillor Lawrence, anything to add? I'll be good, Councillor McCarthy. Uh, not a great deal, other than to say that um, just for the benefit of the gallery and obviously to remind councillors, we do have an external audit committee. <coughs> um, it is a, a critical function in our governance structure, yep. and uh, it serves a purpose which. Um, uh, requires a high level of expertise and I'm really pleased with the proposed appointment. I would also say that we have taken the view as a, as a council over a number of years now to from time to time renew our audit committee because we want to make sure that we've got fresh eyes on the books and, uh, and critical questions being asked and um, I'm pleased to say that in terms of the auditors that we have had on the audit committee we have a very strong and consistent and I think quite forensic um, set of eyes that have come through and I look forward to uh, Mr Apodi's um, views and, and criticisms as well um, in her role on the Audit Committee assuming that this motion is supported. Thank you very much Councillor McCarthy. There's no further comment. Yeah, just one, one Gregor. Comment. Uh, I just want to note that um, I, I was on the Audit Committee in previous years and it's good to see that there's um, finally a bit of a gender balance in relation to yes. the uh, external Audit Committee members. Thank you Councillor Greco. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Thank you, councillors, and we'll welcome her aboard. Okay. That concludes our uh, consideration reports. We're going to go to item seven, uh, responses to notice of motion, commencing with 7.1. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'll move this, but I, I do um, uh, note um, that the motion and the recommendation, sorry, the recommendation and the report seem to um, not contradict each other, but seem to have a missing point. So I just wanted to seek clarification before I add two words yes, to the motion. Yes, please do. Um, it's just that the report itself refers to uh, to con well, sorry, the recommendation refers to adopting option four, um, which is the historic marker, but later on refers to other options um, which are about referring uh, the potential for a new and revitalised work or a restored work to the budget process. Um, these options aren't mutually inconsistent, um, both can happen. So I just wanted to seek advice from officers before I propose some wording changes um, as to uh, whether, whether there is a concern about about inconsistency in, in those, uh, those options. I'll refer that to uh, Ms Knox. Um, through you, Mr. <coughs> if the Council's wish to add that recommendation, I don't think that's something inconsistent. We've just selected the option um, for councillors to um, change their language to. So okay. Uh, well, in, that, in that case, Mr Mayor, I would um, just change the word slightly to um, uh, obviously have op option four, but also to refer um, the other options to the 20. Uh, it will be the 2016-17 budget process. I'll second. Second to Councillor Lawrence. Okay. Sir? Okay. Refer to the 17-18 council budget process. We're working on the 17-18 budget. Yes. Um, and seconded by Councillor Lawrence. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor McCarthy. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you for that opportunity to just to clarify that point. Um, this uh, arose from a notice of motion that I raised some months ago uh, following the, uh, uh, I think, um, quite abhorrent um, uh, def defacing of the mural in Smith Street, which councillors may recall was fondly known as the North Women's Mural, even though mm. it's located in the city of Yarra, and uh, was uh, constructed back in the 80s, um, as was the Ruby Thompson mural, which um, we probably are all familiar with, has been uh, defaced over many years. Um, not by great graffiti, but by uh, pretty, pretty paltry tagging. And uh, in both cases, these murals are part of the social and cultural history of the city of Darabin, and of course to our south, um, as well as the city of Yarra. And uh, whilst there's been a lot of attention on the mural in Smith Street, which um, represents the history of women's journeys, uh, both uh, migrant, Aboriginal, uh, our refugee, and, uh, and some of our um, established communities as well, um, the one in Ruby Thompson hasn't had anywhere nearly as much attention, and, uh, and that's what we're doing tonight. Um, of course, the, the mural, as councillors would know, having visited it, um, I'm sure, on many occasions, uh, the, Ruby, the, the mural in the Ruby Thompson Reserve uh, there was fondly known as the Koori Youth Mural and represented um, a, a range of themes in consultation with local young people and the Aboriginal community, the Torres Strait Island community in Darabin, or in fact in our precursor, the city of Northcote. And the mural itself um, had a lot of young, uh, involvement from young people, um, but critically it reflected a sense of both um, optimism um, and opportunity, um, but also a, a sense of the challenges that uh, young people, particularly from Aboriginal backgrounds, face 
in a place like Northcote, um, despite um, the close-knit community, um, because uh, of the challenges uh, of the time, and many of those challenges exist today. So the proposal here is to find a way to move forward. Um, and uh, of course there is the proposal included in the recommendation to have a historical marker, um, but my original motion proposed, um, following some consultations with the, art, the original artists, um, a possible restoration or reimagining of that mural. And that could in fact be a completely different mural that is reflective of, uh, of current themes. Um, I'm really hoping that the next council will take this opportunity up. We can't make a financial commitment on behalf of that council now, but certainly by keeping this on the agenda, we can ask the next council to, uh, to actually make a commitment in its budget process to, to commit funds. And uh, as councillors would see there, we're not talking about um, uh, an a, 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 a amount of money against each option which is beyond council's capacity. We have a public art program. There is also state government funding that is available for these sorts of projects. And I'd like to think it's the sort of thing which the council would make a priority of, particularly given the rich history, but also the location and, uh, and, and the challenges that um, we continue to face uh, for many young people in our community. Um, so while I support a reimagination of that mural in some form, um, that's really a question for the next council and consultation with our Aboriginal Advisory Committee and other relevant bodies. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lawrence, seconder. Um, yes, Mr Mayor, yes, thanks. Um, just so I don't cover the same territory as uh, Councillor McCarthy in terms of what's possible, I'd just like to note um, both the Smith Street mural and uh, the Ruby Thompson mural were part of a much wider movement, of public art, uh, which was quite different to the public art that came later, which was more we're used to public resources paying for private artists to operate on a large scale. This was part of an art movement that was pretty much focused in the northern suburbs, which was the epicentre. It is more, which we now know as Morland, Darabin, Yarra. And the artists involved, and I was involved in many of these murals uh, in other cities, <coughs> uh, worked collaboratively with the community and developed a vision with the community. And it was a very different uh, sort of imagining. Obviously, our Curry mural uh, in St George's Road reflects both that kind of arts practice. So I, I certainly welcome this, and I think, I hope that we have a, a detailed discussion about it because it's not just about preserving those particular murals, it's, uh, it would be good for the community to revisit some of those principles that created those artworks. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Yes. If there's no further comment or debate, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now go to notice a motion, item 8, commencing with 8.1, the future of the Crest of Market, moved by Councillor Greco. I will second it. Uh, I've also put a very slight amendment which uh, will be op predicted up very shortly. Councillor Greco, have you that? Uh, yes, I am. Yep, okay, move Councillor Greco. Second Councillor Lee. Councillor Greco, you have the floor. Yeah, look, thank you, thank you Mr Mayor. Look, um, um, look, this is a very important um, issue and, um, and, uh, and I'd like to uh, speak to it and just to highlight some points. The, the motion, as you can see, is quite self-explanatory. Um, and as, as it was mentioned uh, from members of the gallery, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mr um, Spateri, who's also the advocate for the traders um, that, that's here tonight. Um, look, the motion, as I said, is quite self-explanatory. Um, iconic um, part of Darabin, 45-year history, it's been serving the community for, for that long. And, um, and, and, and the market is very much what makes up Preston. It's the life, economic lifeblood of High Street um, in Preston. And so uh, no, nothing really more needs to be said about that. But what we really need to talk about, and, um, and what I've been hearing in the last uh, six months to a year, or even longer, is that, um, that the traders are growing uh, more and more um, anxious. There's a lot of um, uncertainty out there uh, amongst the traders, and I've uh, mixed um, uh, with the traders and um, heard, spoken to many of the traders. And uh, one of the things that I hear from the traders is that um, they would like council to take a more active role in relation to um, hearing their concerns, and, um, and also particularly in a more active role of protecting the integrity of, of this iconic site of this iconic market and, and therefore that's why I come to the two most important parts of, uh, um, of, of my motion um, there is about calling a meeting 
of the um, of, of the storeholders and urgent <coughs> meeting of the storeholders. I think from what the emails that we've received and also from what we've heard in the gallery here tonight, the storeholders want to um, want to be heard by council and um, want to express their views to, to council in relation to the, to this particular site. We do this with other with other traders, whether it's the Reservoir Traders Association or whether it's the Dorthka Traders Association, and uh, and I think that the that the Preston Market traders deserve to be heard on, on this important on this important matter. The the, the other the other thing that uh, I'm, I'm also proposing there in the motion, um, and is also to open up a dialogue, and and it's just that to open up a dialogue with the state government about the purchasing of the site. Um, and to bring the site back into public hands. Eleven years ago, um, I, I believe that the, the market was sold. When the market was first established, it was actually established on public land. And, um, and I think that we need to have that dialogue 15 with, seconds. With, the, with the state government, because I think that's a way of ensuring, or that's one of the key ways of ensuring that the integrity and the, uh, and, and the future of the market can be, can be kept in place. Look, I urge councillors to, to, to endorse Thank this you, motion and so that we can have the meeting with the storeholders and then following from that, as has been mentioned by um, members of the gallery, we need to also consult with the community thank about you, the Councillor. future of the market. Councillor Lee, second. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, there's very little doubt that the Preston market is uh, at the cultural and also the geographical heart of Darabin. Uh, it's right in the middle. It is a uh, iconic destination and a, 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 and a part of our cultural heritage in the city of Darabin, as Councillor Greco said earlier. I too have heard uh, many stories from traders. I know at least two traders have closed up shop in Preston Market who basically said uh, they don't see their future as their, uh, in the market as being viable and uh, they rather seek uh, their businesses elsewhere. So sadly we've seen two businesses go and of course their associated employment and everything else that goes with it. Uh, the third part of my motion which really uh, takes up uh, the part where Councillor Greco started is that uh, I think Council does and can have a, uh, play a facilitatory role in this whole business, regardless of whose hands it is in, uh, if it is, even if it is in private hand as it currently is, we still have a role to facilitate that discussion, that dialogue, that consultation between the landowners, the potential developers, the many traders, the residents, the nearby residents, and also those visitors who come to this uh, Preston Market to shop for their, not only for groceries, but for their also cultural experience. So without preempting what the report might say, but I think um, as part of this ongoing process, uh, some sort of advisory committee might be required, consisting of those various key stakeholders, such as traders and residents, and also visitors. And that, the best way to, for that to occur is for council to, to play a role in facilitating this discussion, so that we get the best outcomes for the community, be it for the traders or for the residents or for many visitors that come to visit the market for their shopping and also for their cultural experience. Thank you, Thank Mr. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor. Can I just uh, ask the mover to entertain maybe a slight word change? I've just been advised by the Acting CEO, uh, point one, where it says at the end of August, may be amended to as soon as practical because it may take us a little bit of time to have dialogue and uh, as soon as communicate yeah. as soon as possible, as soon as practical. Um, with, with the market holder, uh, the storeholders and the, the owners of the market as well. I, I, I'm just concerned because we're, we're going into caretaker mode. Um, I, I just was hoping that the Which meeting is, I think, be, the 20th of September. Yeah, so I'm just hoping that the meeting could be held as soon as possible because yeah. it is an urgent issue. Yes, no, I understand. That's fine. Yep. I think it's. Sorry, three minutes. Just the context of um, being tied to the end of August, so we can't arrange it in that time. Can you speak up, please? Sorry. So three, Mr. Mayor. So just the context of um, the end of August, we might it might creep beyond that. So just to allow as right, soon as yeah, practical. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. As soon as practical. Uh, okay. 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 We've had speakers on it. Can I just have a question? Question, um, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, yeah, just Mr. Mayor, we've just briefly had a report on the new direction of the market today, which was very brief and not much detail. Um, so I'm just wondering how this consultation process is going to dovetail with the actual consultation process or processes that are triggered by the application. Um, through Ms Smith, uh, good question. I guess the, the planning applications that will they'll go through their normal process. I guess the context of this as I read it is to um, talk to traders about concerns. So I guess officers would need to be cognizant of not um, 
I guess, blending the two matters together. Um, there's probably not much more I can add to that. Yeah. Okay. Any further comments? Councillor McCarthy. Oh, look, I just wanted to um, highlight, and I, th I don't want it to be missed. Um, uh, Are you speaking for it? Sorry, speaking in favour, but um, what I think is actually the most critical part of what Councillor Greco is actually proposing, which is, of course, uh, point two in the second part of the motion, which is actually asking the state government to take a leading role in relation to this issue um, and to consider purchasing the market component um, of the site. And I, re I realise that uh, this is an unusual request to make of the state government, um, but I think the, there's some, uh, I think some great merit in what Councillor Greco is proposing, because it's only a few months ago, that, and I remind councillors that council wrote to the planning minister seeking uh, a form of heritage protection for the fresh food market. Um, recognising that whilst it, it may not have the, uh, the national tourism focus of the Victoria, Queen Victoria market, it may not have the, uh, the location um, that, uh, that, that is currently given to the South Melbourne market, it has a very important and precious place in our city and for a whole range of communities beyond our city as well as a place where people seek um, basically they're, they're, they're the source of, of their well-being which is um, cheap and, and, uh, and fresh food. And, uh, and it's the cultural history around the market which we're actually talking about here, but it's also the future of that, uh, that's those sets of businesses and the, uh, the heritage value of that market which uh, we requested support from the Minister. Um, and uh, so this is a different request. It's a request not to just protect the heritage, but in fact protect the future um, of the fresh food market. And I think we need to recognise that um, this is almost a bit of a last, last ditch effort, I think, to actually protect what Preston Market is. Because we have not been given the support from the state government for those heritage controls. Um, maybe the state government may wish to play a more active role. And, uh, and I think that's what the proposal is. But certainly, um, we will see and we will test whether they are serious about the future of Preston Market as a jewel in Melbourne's northern crown. Thank you very much, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Cedars. Um, Mr Mayor, uh, not to put a damper on things, but I'd like to speak <laughs> against. Um, and I'll go to uh, section two towards the bottom down there. Um, I'm not sure whether the proprietary interests of Salter, and God knows for as long as I've been here, no one can accuse me of having been an advocate for them. But the proprietary interests to be seized by the state government in the context of a compulsory acquisition, in the context of, and the language says they're social and cultural, I don't think exists. Um, so I think it's frustrated and dead on arrival. Um, I understand the intent behind what uh, Councillor Pippo uh, is trying to establish there, but I think in the context of things it's switching along both. Um, you know, we want to engage the community, uh, but I think we need to do it from a practical standpoint rather than trying to imagine a circumstance which doesn't exist. Thank you, Councillor Seavis. Uh, the mover has a right of reply. If there's no further... Oh. Councillor Lawrence. Um, For yeah, or against? Uh, against the motion. Um, look, fundamentally, um, this motion has become quite wide-ranging when there is an actual critical thing to look at, which is the concerns of the traders at this point in time. And instead, we've got some fantasy coming in again, which you know may suit some people. But, um, it's hard to authorise or ask another level of government to start bidding at an auction when the vendor hasn't even brought it to market. And so that, again, shows the absolute fantasy of this. Um, in fact, and that's where I'd like to also flag that we need to defer it, because from what's been presented to Council tonight, which is still in a briefing session, which is still going to come in detail, is actually a practical application of innovative application that looks like it might get built. So if the owner is coming with serious uh, applications and not pie in the sky ones, um, I'm not sure that we can start asking another level of government to buy something when we don't know if the vendors sell. Any further debate from councillors? Councillor Greco, you may close the debate. Yes, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, I just want to pick up on two points. One, the point that Councillor Seedy's made and also the point that Councillor uh, Lawrence made. Firstly, in terms of um, whether um, there are grounds to uh, uh, acquire the land or, or to protect the, the site uh, on social or cultural, uh, for cultural significance, I, I just want to point out to councillors that um, 
um, sites can actually be protected, not only for architectural reasons, but also because the site has a, either cultural or a social significance. And so they, they were actually um, uh, criteria that were recently added into um, the, the protections on, on particular on, on, on public land and, and also on other land to, to, uh, to ensure that it remains in the, in the, common, uh, in the common trust, if you like, of, of the community. So that's to, that's to speak to your point, Councillor Citizen. I'm glad that you raised that. In relation to Councillor Lawrence, in the, in the short time that I have, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say that you know, here it's really either you're for the market or uh, for the market's future and for the integrity of the market or you're against the market. It's very simple. Uh, we need to speak to the traders. We need to open a dialogue. We don't know where that dialogue will go. Uh, let's have that dialogue rather than stifling and killing the, the, the potential of uh, exploring other opportunities with the community here uh, in, in this chamber. I think the community uh, requires us as a council, given that it is a core part of who we are as Darwin in, in terms of protecting this market, protecting its integrity. It served the community for 45 years. For 45 years it's been out there um, you know, delivering food for the community and I think we owe it to the traders and more so to our community Ten that, seconds. Uh, that, that, that we explore every possibility and first and foremost that we listen to them and we get our um, politicians to actually listen to the community about safeguarding the future of this market. Thank you Councillor Gregory. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? That vote's carried. All those in favour, I ask to stand up. I name Councillor Lee, McCarthy, Fontana, Walsh and Greco. Those against, Councillor Walsh, <coughs> Councillor Cedars. Thank you very much, Councillors, for that item. Next item to considering is uh, 8.2, funding for school crossings in Darabin. Moved by Councillor Walsh. Happy to, happy to second it, second but I would it. ask Councillor Walsh to just amend the motion to refer to the Wish Roads Minister. We could have had these earlier. <coughs> uh, well, yeah. just, um, it, it is the Roads Minister, so it should... Um, yep, happy to insert okay. the Minister for um, so Roads. Councillor Walsh and Councillor McCarthy seconds, yes. Okay, can I just Councillor ask a question? Councillor uh, does, does Councillor mean the crossing, the physical structure of the crossing, or the actual supervisors, or both? Um, the, um, the, um, the, actual, um, the actual supervisors. So in that case, it would be the Education Minister, not the Rose Minister, and you should be making clear that it's the supervisor, not the crossing. Um, the reason why I said um, the reason why I said um, relevant minister is um, um, is because I was um, aware that um, it would come under um, a couple of um, portfolios. So, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I read this. There's no reference to supervisors. I read this no, as school I, crossings. That's why I clarify. A different issue. Um, you want to defer the item, Council? Because there's a few happy questions to, that need to be happy to support either of them, but uh, yeah. we need to be clear of what we're. I'm, well, I'm happy to. Um, I'm happy to have. Um, it's been seconded by Council. Yet. Okay. So, Council. Okay. There's some questions asked. Um, you need some clarity in relation to those questions. Which well, uh, sorry, is it, is, it, is it funding of school, school crossings or yeah. is it funding of school crossings supervisors? Supervisors. Uh, it's, well, well, I'm, school crossings supervisors. It's a different motion. I'm, I'm happy with uh, this. Mr Mayor, I think in fairness, I mean, I know it's uh, rather humorous, but um, not that I've ever stood up to clarify a point for Council Walsh, but uh, I think we should have a, a broader interpretation that uh, it concerns uh, I suppose what you might call the administration of the crossing. So inherent in that is the actual person holding the sign. <laughs> Councillor Walsh. Think, um, I do, yes, I um, look. I don't think we need to debate uh, debate semantics here, which is um, what. Um, well, we're not Councillor Walsh. Councillor Lee and Councillor McCarthy asked sensible questions in relation yes. to crossing supervisors or actual. Actually, very important. We need to know, yeah. It's vital. And just, to, so, just to be clear, I don't, I'm not sure if Councillor Walsh is aware of this, but a school crossing costs $150,000 to construct. A supervisor to be funded yeah. is a much smaller amount of money. So, uh, yes, I mean, I do, um, I do mean the, um, um, I do mean the um, crossing, um, their crossing, um, crossing supervisors. Okay, we'll need to amend the, the, the actual content there because it's, it's not clear. Well, Mr. Mayor, to speak at the I'm moment, I'm prepared to amend this. Yeah, if, so um, if, that, yeah. if that helps, yeah, yeah, we need to. Yeah, just amend it. We need to. So let's amend it. Let's amend it. The second that can amend it. So I would have preferred it had this been raised earlier yeah. to actually avoid this confusion. We're going to go into tonight. The ministers. Yeah. 
So can we hear an Some, amendment then? Can we hear an amendment? I'm happy to amend it to, uh, uh, to... Let's hear your amendment. ...for uh, school <coughs> crossing supervisors. Yeah? Are we happy with that? Well, it's up to the mover. Ah, uh, yeah, happy with that. Okay, and we've, and we've also got it. We've got to also make sure we've got the right minister or ministers. Uh, it, is, it is actually the. Um, I believe it is actually the roads minister. Um, Let's write the both. Vic roads. I'll write the roads minister, and ministers, MP. Let's put them uh, both. Um, there. Let's keep moving. And as I said, that's why I said the um, the relevant mini um, minister because I was aware that um, could be multiple. Um, so, Councillor Greco, you're, you're putting an amendment with the wording, yes, I think? Yeah, I, I can write it. Yeah, let's write it. Let's write it. Well, whilst Councillor Walsh is speaking on it, you can write it. Okay. Um, okay, look, um, um, look, now to the um, actual substance of the motion. Um, look, I think, um, I believe this is um, fundamentally a responsible motion to be, um, to, um, to be put in. Um, school, um, the um, school crossings and school crossing supervisors are certainly much needed in the community and you know in many um in many ways um they are um they should be um um considered the um heroes of our um of our local community um but um um but these um school crossings used to be the responsibility of these um of the state government um, this has been a classic example of. Um, um, this has been a classic example of cost shifting, um, and which um, which has occurred in um, um, in Victoria, and um, for the benefit of other councillors, the, um, um, we are, we are given a <coughs> proportion of um, money. To um, to help meet the costs of um, um, of funding um, of funding these programs. However, um, they are um, um, as time goes on, the programs are becoming increasingly um, more expensive, and um, um, and the costs keep going uh, um, um, keep going up and up. Um, 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 every year, these um, the state government, um, and so the state government, um, and the and basically, although the state government do gi um, do give us some money towards it, it um, it is just a mere, but a mere <coughs> fraction of the um, of how much it costs to um, to run um, to run the program. So this motion. Is simply requesting a meeting to discuss the on um, ongoing funding, and it's um, you know so, um, certainly not about um, you know get, um, getting rid of the um, um, of school crossing supervisors. Far from it. Far from it. It's just about um, it's just about making sure that it, um, that it is sustainable. That the, that this program is sustainable because it is is much needed, and um, and they are much. Um, and they are much loved by the community, but um, it is hard. Fifteen seconds. When, um, it, um, but it is. But we need to make sure it's um, it's sustainable in the long term. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Councillor McCarthy, a seconder. Oh, look. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I find myself in the curious situation of having prepared some thoughts in relation to crossing. Well, I thought was going to be the issue we would be debating, which of course is that we are. Um, and I'll just make the point that. The, the cost of installing a school crossing um, close to a school, and that is a priority as, as we develop walkability plans and cycling plans um, for students to make their way to school, um, is, can be prohibitive sometimes um, in a council budget within a year to meet the full needs. Um, and for some schools there are four or five crossing points, um, which not only require the, in, the infrastructure, um, which I thought this motion was about, but also the human resources, um, the person who is able to stand there, um, who is able to provide that critical local service um, to keep kids safe as they cross. And, uh, and I, I, whilst the amount of money for that program is considerably smaller than the infrastructure, it is important. I'm a bit concerned um, by any suggestion that um, Council would not fund school crossing supervisors, even in the rate capping environment. Um, I'd be completely against um, any withdrawal of funding in that regard. But I think it is appropriate that we do make the case to the State Government to pay their fair share 
uh, in relation to this program. Mm -hmm. It is originally a VicRoads funded program. Um, they have progressively withdrawn, or regressively withdrawn funding, I should say, um, to in response to this program, whilst the demands for the program have increased. And you just need to look at the, the, the situation around some of our schools where, whilst we may from time to time find it challenging to find people to fulfil these roles, um, what is even more challenging is actually uh, from time to time um, being able to meet the full demand um, that exists and that's a wonderful demand to have which is people wanting to make their way from home to a school um, from a much greater distance than anyone conceived of. Um, I would like to think this is the sort of thing that would get the interest of our local MPs um, to advocate for us alongside because um, they're very happy to turn up to, uh, to the walking to school days, um, but kids can't get to school and walk to school if they don't have a safe way to cross. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Any other speakers? If not, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Councillors. It's been noted. It's been noted. It's been noted. Thank you. Next item we're looking at is 8.3 to increase public numbers in Durban. Move, Councillor Walsh. We have a seconder. I'll oh, second it. Second Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Walsh. Um, thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr Mayor. This is a, um, about um, the, um, obviously, the, um, the recent elevation in, um, in crime as um, in Darabin, um, as according to the um, latest crime statistics, um, um, ju um, um, justice and procedures um, offences, um, you know, and um, I know they are in the motion, but for the benefit of the um, council and for the gallery, I'll um, explain what they are. They're, um, um, they're often things like, um, um, that, um, you know, they could be things like um, family violence orders um, that are um, being breached. Um, dr uh, drug offences are, um, are, fair, um, are fairly common. Um, um, a fairly, uh, well, fairly, um, fairly self-explanatory, I should say. Um, the other, uh, and also, um, 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 prop um, property, um, property, um, and deception offences, such as um, theft and vandalism, have um, um, have, inc um, have increased in um, um, in Darwin as a um, um, as a whole with. Um, We've seen um, early on in the year we saw, um, in the um, um, in Bandu we saw the spate of um, um, we saw, saw a spate of, um, of vandalism um, uh, um, and um, several councillors put motions at um, at the time about um, um, about tho about those issues. Um, we all, we've also seen um, the. Um, um, increases in um, um, dr um, in, dr um, in drug offences um, and um, cri and crimes against the um, crimes against the person, um, I, um, which are um, often violent um, of, um, offenders. We um, this is simply um, advocating to the um, um, to the um, um, minister for police um, to uh, um, to see what. Um, the minister can perhaps do about increasing the um, numbers of police um, in the beat, on the beat in Darabin to um, to ensure that um, Darabin continues to be a um, a safe place for um, for people to live and for people to raise their families. Thank you, Councillor Walsh, Councillor uh, Lawrence. Um, yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, I think uh, you know. This motion is, is uh, fairly simple and um, perhaps simplistic, but I did go to second it because there is an experience um, that we, we don't have enough response from the police in uh, events like we had in Bandura with uh, repeated antisocial activity in terms of um, behind Polaris there. And so the issue isn't just about raw numbers, police numbers, because there's other factors and there's other specialist work that goes on. Obviously, domestic violence is being expanded by the government currently, and we will be seeing um, increased numbers in that regard. But in terms of tactical units and experienced units, one of the things we experienced with Bandura is that it took a while to get to the resource allocation we required, and obviously we're part of a bigger picture than Darabin, we're part of the northern region, um, 
to address what was some pretty difficult and distressing behaviour that was repeatedly happening at night until about 2 o'clock, from 6pm to 2 o'clock in that region. So I think we should be advocating uh, regarding increased police resources, in particular in, in the northern part of the city, and I'm sure we'll see and others have the same issues. Um, but I hope that um, we will be a little bit more sophisticated in what we're requesting. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'm assuming, uh, Councillor Walsh, you want the Mayor to write to the Minister, yes? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lee? Uh, I just wanted to check, because I just looked at those crime mm. statistic figures. Um, the justice procedure offences have actually dropped, and so has the crime um, against persons. So, um, these can we just get some... Councillor Walsh? Councillor Walsh? Um, Councillor Walsh, wait. Councillor Lee's asked a question. Please finish, Councillor Thank you. Um, so, uh, my question is, um, are we talking about the same period of time or a different period of time? I mean, you know, I don't want to, I'm all in favour to write to the Minister, but we've got to write the Minister on very accurate statements. I don't want to portray any potentially misleading statements because if the report, if the crime stats are showing that justice procedures, offences and crime against persons are actually had a slight decrease, I don't want to write to the Minister saying it had an increase. Um, these were the, um, these were the, um, these were the March. Um, 2016 um, um, numbers which I had. <coughs> can we? Can I just uh, get some proper response? Because uh, and I quote to the to the to the an article in the leader which was quoting the Darabin inspector, which actually said, and I and I quote, uh, it wasn't all doom and gloom in the statistics with justice procedure offences and crime against personal offences both dropping. So that directly contradicts point B and point D um, of the notice of motion. Um, no, um, I, the statistics I have don't um, um, don't um, don't match um, um, don't don't match that. And I've got That's fine. We, 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 we don't have to argue on the accuracy. I, we can just put it to a vote and see whether we do yeah, or don't. Um, and then we can put uh, uh, figures if necessary. I, 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 I'd ask that. Speak against them? Uh, no, I'm not speaking against. I'd, I'd ask this motion to be deferred until we get proper statistics on those, on okay. those crime figures. Well, we can't have a motion to actually support it. If that fails, we'll then consider an alternative. Mr. Mayor, I, I may offer a way through is that <laughs> if we change the words of the, the motion, that rather than um, writing to the, um, to, uh, to the uh, minister, is that we seek a report. From, uh, from contradiction from council motion. in relation to some of the statistics and some of the issues can't do it. Can't contradicts the motion. Yeah, before contradict. before we write can't, it. can't do it council Gregor. Uh, it's, it's a it's a request for an amendment it's, no it's not it doesn't work that way in our in our, in our act in our unfortunately it's a notice of motion separate matter all together councillor uh, uh, i was just going to propose an amendment to the words which i don't believe changes the spirit of the motion which was in point two um to change higher police numbers um, to um, uh, better crime prevention strategies. Um, so that would be to change the reference from police numbers to crime prevention strategies um, and to delete point one. Um, it goes against the actual... So can we see that word? against the motion. It still goes against the actual brain of what's mm -hmm. requested there, I'm afraid. With respect, Mayor, we just changed school crossing to school crossing supervisors. Yes, we can have that. It's a simple matter. It's a simple matter. Um, <laughs> uh, unless, unless that, that amendment can be um, considered, I'm forced to speak against it because it's... Well, I'll speak against it. Well, look, I, I'll speak against this and I, and I speak against this reluctantly because I, I just feel that not only the issues that Councillor Lee has pointed out um, in relation to the accuracy of crime statistics, and what I'm actually concerned about, Mr Mayor, is that no one checked this before, apart from Councillor Lee. Oh, I just checked it now. And I, I, I Councillor Lee um, did, but I would have liked um, uh, potentially an officer check on this or some uh, third party or objective check on this uh, before we have this even published. We could have actually asked this well in advance of tonight's well, debate. I, I, anyway, I, 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 would, I would have assumed, Mr Mayor, that um, Councillor Walsh would have checked the facts um, with uh, the Council Walsh. 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 Councillor McCarthy and, um, and I would hope that before it was um, approved for consideration by Council that it had at least gone through a fact check process um, because obviously the data is there, the information is there. Um, but I would like to draw my concerns um, to the Council's attention regarding point two, which um, seems to 
argue a causal link between um, the incidence of crime and the number of police that we have in our local stations, in our task forces and on the streets. Councillor Lawrence made the point quite rightly as the seconder um, that it's a simplistic solution. I'd also say that potentially um, it's, it is, uh, they're not the causal link that uh, is being proposed um, in Councillor uh, Walsh's motion. Um, if you look at contemporary policing, and I've had this experience um, through my professional life of dealing with the police on a whole range of different activities. Uh, one of the biggest things that people need to get their head around is the fact that um, if you want to prevent crime, you have to focus on crime prevention, which is not always about numbers of police. It's actually about um, a whole range of social and cultural and, uh, and uh, educational opportunities. It's about infrastructure. It's about a whole lot of things. Um, it's not uh, just about bodies and stations, and, uh, and it's a simplistic response, and I think it doesn't do justice to the injustices that Councillor Walsh is concerned about. I would ask Councillor Walsh to seriously consider withdrawing and considering this for the next meeting. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Any other speakers? I, I just urge Sorry. Councillor Walsh to withdraw this notice of motion. Uh, well, if he's unwilling to withdraw this and defer this next meeting, then I'm forced to speak against it. Speak against so it. this is my, la my last opportunity to reach out to Councillor Walsh to say, please withdraw the notice of motion, defer to the next ordinary council meeting so we can actually get true and accurate statistics. If you're unwilling to withdraw I, or defer it, uh, it, then I have no choice but to oppose it because I cannot, I cannot put my heart to and, and put commit council to write something I'll ask that you to speak is not against it then. correct. Mm -hmm. You can't withdraw it. You've got to speak against it and vote it down. Can I get some can I get some the advice here from you? I'm getting some advice, Councillor Greco. <laughs> Councillor Lawrence, I'm getting some advice. Wait. Ms. Stevens. Through you, Mr. Mayor, if it is withdrawn, then it can't be put to the next meeting, but it can be deferred. There's a difference between deferring and withdrawing. Yes. Just a procedural question, Mr. Mayor, in regards to withdrawal of the seconder at this point in time. Withdrawing. I'm, look, I'm happy I'm to um, look if look if it yeah. assists. Councillor yeah. yeah. Walsh, wait. You withdrawing the seconder? Look, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes or no? I'm, I'm withdrawing question. my seconding of this okay. motion. Um, I'm happy to um, in um, in light of that. I'm happy to look. I can. Um, back up the statistics um, that, um, that I've seen, and um, they may be so different. Um, do you wish to withdraw or defer um, the matter? In, um, but in um, <coughs> to assist the council, I'm happy to um, defer the matter till the next council meeting. Second to defer. Oh, second to defer. Second to defer. Okay. We've had a bit of debate discussion. Do you have a question or not? Because otherwise I'll go straight to a vote. Right. Straight to a vote to defer the matter to the next meeting. All those in favour? <coughs> Thank you, councillors. Members of we haven't just debated that matter. <coughs> Let's come back to the next council meeting for this decision making. Thank you. That concludes our notice of the motion. We now go to item nine, urgent business. Urgent business. Mr. Mayor, no, if I may just make a, a statement in relation to urgent business. I had an urgent business item that I, I, that I had sent around to councillors, but I've been advised late this afternoon by our officers that in relation to the um, proposed closure of Carroll Street, that is no longer, I've been advised, is no longer on, on, on the table. So um, there's no urgency anymore required ar around that matter. And I believe um, uh, from my conversation with the uh, acting CEO is that the residents will now be written to um, and advising them that, the, uh, that there will be no closure the, the situation at that particular t uh, at, that, at that particular intersection will be monitored by council, but there is no proposal to uh, uh, to close it. If I could just get some confirmation from uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, of our acting CEO in relation to that, so like that the community. Thank you, Councillor Greco. I think it's pretty clear the question, and it was answered before during question time. Can we hear it again for the yeah. benefit of Councillor Greco and members of the gallery? Yes, sir. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, as I outlined in public question time, the option of closure of that street is no longer proceeding, and officers will consider other um, traffic calming measures um, going forward. Thank you, Councillor. On that basis, I'm, I'm happy to withdraw my. Well, it wasn't accepted motion. in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> item 10, general business. Any general business items? Uh, no, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we now go to item 11. Any petitions from councillors? Not from there. Are no petitions. No. We go to item 12, reports of standing committee. We have 12.1, the hearing of submissions committee. We have a mover there. Move, Councillor McCarthy. Second, Councillor Lee. All those in favour? That's carried. 
We now go to item 13, records of assemblies of councillors. Item 13.1, move Councillor McCarthy, second Councillor Lee. All those in favour? Carried. Reports by mayors and councillors, they've been circulated, submitted. Thank you for those who have bothered to do so. Can I re request all councillors to, to like those items, please? Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. We now go to a vote on that item. All those in favour? Yes. Item 14. Yes. Councillor McCarthy and Councillor Lee. All those in favour? Carried. We now go to item 15, consideration of reports confidential 15.1. And we need to move something we go into camera. I move to. Move Councillor Lee. Move to the, um, me to move the camera to consider a confidential item. Seconded by Second. Councillor Lawrence. All those in favour? Carry. Members of the gallery, we have to consider some items con in confidential matters, so if you can vacate the chamber, we should join you very shortly for refreshments to the rear of this room here. Okay, thank you, members of the gallery. Or you can go home.